back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. All of our wise conversations brought to you by our friends at Wise Markets. Uh, so proud to have them back for another go-around here. The Maryland Lottery is taking us out on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour, doing a lot of things, including a vegan crab cake later this month on the 18th. We'll be at the Land of Cush downtown with Brooke Learman. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot of elections, but for now, we're going to be giving away some Betty Boop scratch-off tickets, courtesy of the Maryland Lottery. We're going to be at Conrad's on the 6th. Land of Cush on the 18th and a whole bunch more uh, before Preakness and then again after Preakness and leading into the month. All of it also brought to you by our friends at Goodwill. The wheels on the bus go round and round and our friends at Window Nation. Uh, and they should be your friends at Window Nation as well. Don, uh, election season. This is where the nerd and you comes out with pollsters and politicians and pundits and all of that. But the basic premise of voting is you have to know how to do it, where to do it. Uh, I have moved in the last six months. So I, you know, I had that going on since the last election, my wife as well. So we're going to do a little recap here. And uh, I know you always love the wisdom that we have here, that we make sure that we get the best information for our listeners at Baltimore Positive. And it's so, so important that people plan ahead to vote. Well, for the past three months, three or four months, Every time I was trying to follow the bouncing ball of when we might or might not vote, I could see the face of one of our regular visitors to Baltimore Positive, and that's Deputy Administrator at the Maryland Board of Elections. Uh, she's been down there a while now. She's, as she likes to say, an experienced uh, election official. Uh, we welcome back Nikki Charlson. Nikki, welcome. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah. Well, Nikki, I, I'm only half kidding. As I tried to follow what was going on with lawsuits and delays in lawsuits and legislative action i thought and maps don't forget maps world? maps are at the key right? maps <laughs> what is nikki what is nikki doing at the board of elections to keep up with all of that so before we even get into specific dates just talk about as a chief administrator down there trying to keep the trains running on time uh, well, thank you again for having me. Always happy to join your show and to share important election information. So it certainly has been a roller coaster. Um, the redistricting process is something that happens every 10 years, and it causes lines to change. And election officials, we care a lot about lines because it, those lines tell us which ballot to give you. Um, so that's why we care about lines. And the redistricting process is very much a process that is managed at the local election official, the local level. And so our local election officials have been busy um, following, following those lines, looking at them, watching the litigation. And we're so pleased now to have final lines um, that the locals are busy implementing. I mean, this is a very manual, time-consuming process for them. Um, we have a great crew of local election officials. You can't be an ele election official without being detail-oriented, and this is the most detailed thing that we do. It's I, the core. I would say this week I had an occasion to go online and look for an official. Uh, full admission, David Marks. Uh, I was going to invite him out to my show at Conrad's. And I'm like, I went online and I literally just Googled up to make sure that where I'm having the show is still his district. It is his district, like all of that. And I was amazed as a citizen how quick it was. Just put an address in and it tells you where you are. And I thought, hmm, this seems kind of complex, especially when Don and I were, you, you and I were at G&M, right, over on the west side. We're like, that is one block into Anne Arundel County and forever will be, I guess, at this point. But where the lines are, they're not always obvious to citizens, right? Like where roads are and all that. But when you Google it, there are people like you that make sure this is clean and we, you, you know where you are. I had to do the same thing when I moved out to the county. That's exactly right. And that's what our local election officials are doing. And they're taking the the written description of the districts and the maps that you, yes, this is all about maps. And then they're putting the lines in and making sure that if a legislative district has moved and maybe you're gonna now be in this new district that we make sure we move those voters um, into the new district. So it's very time consuming and it's still going on. Uh, we hope to be wrapping up this month. And so the websites will then be updated once everybody is in their right spot under the new maps. And after all the proofing is done, because this is obviously the core of what we do is we need to make sure voters get their ballot. And that is all based on the districts. 
I, you know, Don was my civics teacher back in, in high school. So I'm going to give this, Don, this is for you and for Nikki. I'm just asking this. In these districts where things have changed, if I thought I was in two and I'm in three or I was in one and I'm in two, when, when this happens, the constituency itself, is there any effort to let every citizen know that, hey, you're not there anymore, you're here now? Like, what is that process? Other than the really astute people and the people that are were fighting in all of this and following it through media or our show, wherever it is, but to the, the, the great uninitiated, I would say, is there an effort to let people know that, you're here, not there anymore? Do they get a special note saying you're here, not there? Uh, they are, they do, they are. They will get a notice. So a couple notices actually. So okay. we, um, every voter before an election gets, or every household before a primary gets a sample ballot. So the sample ballot will include your new districts. It will show the candidates that are on your ballot, which will be your candidates moving forward. And will also show your polling place because that can also change. We also are hoping to send out a new voter registration card for every voter whose district has changed. So if nothing changes and you don't get anything in the mail, then your information is the same, but you should still look at that sample ballot. Uh, but we are looking to send out a notice to every voter whose information has changed. Separate notice saying your information's changed, here's your new information. And then, of course, our website, if they, are initiate, if they initiate the contact with us, our website will reflect the new information. But those two mailings are what we rely on to get that information out. Plus, we'll be doing some advertising and, and media buys and, and on promoting it on, on shows like this to let voters know to, to make sure last, you know, two years ago, it was make your plan vote. It's still make your plan and vote. The make your plan is a little different. We want to make sure that people understand that maybe they have a new voting location on election day. Maybe a candidate that they've seen on their ballot for the last 10 years is not on their ballot anymore because they're in a new district. And so it's a different it's a different way to plan voting, uh, but it's equally important as it was in 2020. Well, Nick, Nikki, I want to try to focus a little bit on some dates. And and I went I agree with Nestor. I went to your website. I think it's terrific. It's It's really, you know, we all try to judge whether or not a website is user friendly and yours, I think, is very user friendly. There were some dates that I want to review because I think that's what our listeners want to know. And this voting in July thing is very, very different. I, correct me if I'm wrong, because there was a date on there when I looked at it, I thought, well, that seems I'm not sure that's right. And it said I'm looking right at it. It says your request for a mail in ballot for the gubernatorial primary election must be received by July the 12th, 2022. Now, I think I took that from your website. The election is July the 19th. So if I can request a mail-in ballot as late as July the 12th, you're going to turn that around quick enough to get me a ballot mailed to me to allow me to mail my ballot in? Yes, we will. Um, again, the local boards will work very hard to get that in the system as quickly as possible. We encourage, if you know you want to vote a mail-in ballot, make the request now. You don't, need don't to wait till July 12th. <laughs> don't wait till July 12th. That's what I was thinking, Master. You I'm can going... do it now. Right. Do it now. Um, but at, by that point, the, the local election officials have, have taken over the mailing process, so it's just a local mail. Um, but again, if, if you know you want to vote by mail, don't wait till July 12th. Do it now. You can do it on our website. You can print out the form. Um, you may have already received one in the mail and already submitted them. And if you've done that, that's great. You don't need to do it again. Um, but the July 12th, it's tight, but we are able to get them out. Um, obviously the goal is to have them out in, in the voters hands by Saturday. That's the preference, um, but we can't control the post office either, um, but we'll get them out as fast as we can. So voters have them in time to vote and return them on July 19th. Can I ask the dumb guy question in the middle of the room? If there's somebody out there listening and they're pissed about this or happy about that or over, whatever they're into and they want to vote and they don't, they've never voted. Cause I'm sure we have somebody out there that's listening. It's just, 
how how would you tell them the best way to do this? I mean, I was at the post office recently, saw people uh, getting passport pictures taken uh, here in the Lock Raven area, and I'm like, well, that's you know, I hadn't seen that in a while. And you think about all of these different ways and the internet. Uh, and I I had when I moved, I had um, I got a new driver's license, so there's availability and there's a lot of boxes you can check. There's a lot of opportunity to do it if you haven't done it. And I've been a registered voter forever, but I wouldn't know that if if I just if I moved to Kansas and I wanted to register, what would I do? If I moved to Maryland, you're new here, you haven't voted, what's the best, easiest way to say, I want to vote this time for the first time? Well, great. So happy to walk through that process. You start with, you have to be registered to vote in Maryland. Uh, so that process is open all the time. Um, we encourage voters to use our online system. It's quick, it's easy. It's easy for us to process it on the back end. But understanding that not everybody wants to use it or has access, that there are paper forms that they can get from their local board office, post offices, some libraries have them, um, state agencies have them like you experience at MVA, you can pick up a paper form there, fill it out and mail it in. So you have to be registered. We do have same day registration um, during early voting and on election day. So if you miss the deadline of June 28th, it's not that you can't vote. It just means you're gonna have to do that process the same time you vote. It will take a little bit longer than everybody else because I'm already registered, you're already registered. So you will be doing two processes at once. Um, but we really encourage that if you know you wanna vote, register early, get that in so you have your card and then you'll know where you go to vote. You'll know more about your options. And then you just pick how you wanna vote. So you're registered, then do you wanna vote in person? There's early voting and election day. So early voting is from July 7th to the 14th. And there'll be locations in every jurisdiction. Our large urban jurisdictions have many locations. Uh, you can vote on election day, July 19th. Or as we've talked about, you can request a mail-in ballot and just vote remotely. So that will be delivered to you. You fill it out at the convenience whenever you may get it back in. It has to be postmarked on or before election day, which is July 19th. So register, figure out how you want to vote. And if you want to vote in person, there's nothing you need to do except for show up. If you want to vote by mail, just submit your request as soon as possible, but no later than the 12th. Mickey, July 12th. I think, and, and I'll, I'll personalize it as well as Nestor did. So my wife and I, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago, whenever it was, got the uh, request in the mail. And it said, if you want to uh, request a vote by mail, fill this out, send it back in. Um, and one of the options was, or it may even have been online. I can't remember if we mailed it back in or did it online. It, one of the options was, and if you want this to be forever going forward, that you will automatically receive a mail-in ballot check here, which we did. So I, I want to confirm that if folks did that, from this point on, people like my wife and I will be getting mail-in ballots for every election in Maryland without doing anything else? That's right. That's an, a change that the legislature adopted in 2021. And so we have implemented it for this election. It's what's called a permanent absentee list or permanent absentee voter. So if you sign up to get that ballot forever, then before every election for which you're eligible, we will send you that ballot. Uh, you won't have to do anything else. It'll come to the address you've given us and we'll keep doing that. The important thing to keep in mind is if you've made that request and you move, you need to make sure we have your new address so we can send it to your new address. And uh, so that's, this will be our first election. We've had what's called the permanent list. And we have, there's great, great interest in, in that. So those sure. are interesting to see. Um, it does look like we're slowly shifting from, um, I think we'll probably still have more in-person voting in 2022 than we will have by mail. Um, but that by mail group is getting much bigger and a good chunk of them are, are permanent voters. Well, I'm, let's talk, absentee now, voters. now you're talking about one of my, my favorite topics, Nestor knows, a passion of mine, how we count these votes. So let's, those of us who have requested a mail-in ballot, we're likely to start seeing them, God bless the post office, around when? So we're looking right now, scheduling 35 to 40 days before the election. So that's maybe the second, the third week of June is our target. Okay, so middle of June, uh, Don and Linda Moeller received their ballots, 
Uh, when when do the drop boxes appear? They'll appear about the same time that we start putting ballots in the mail. The hope is okay. that they'll all be in place by the time you get your ballots. Okay, this is Baltimore Positive. It's a full service show. We want all of our listeners to understand. So the drop boxes will be out there. Nothing could have been easier. We the last time we filled out our ballots, went down to the uh, our Buda Senior Center. Nice drop box there. Totally secure. I voted uh, at your favorite place in the world. <laughs> I voted in the parking lot of Camden Yards. There you a drop go. Drop box to... right in front of Mr. Angelos's window, right below there it. There you go. And I, I went up there at five in the morning. Boom! Right in, dropped it right in there, so, and it's all over with. So my my gut tells me, Nikki, and 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 you're saying the response has been pretty darn good, and you ex, you ex, you sort of see a shift starting to take place in Maryland. Um, my my sort of rant is that. It's crazy for me to say the state of Florida actually gets something right and the state of Pennsylvania gets something very, very wrong. But it seems to me that following Bush v. Gore way back in 2000, the state of Florida decided they're going to learn how to count their votes, count the votes ahead of time. And within usually 90 minutes of the polls closing in Florida, we have a pretty good vote tally. In Pennsylvania, my argument is, is that their antiquated way of counting votes is what leads to all the distrust in the system. So that brings us to Maryland. Any changes in the way local boards will now count votes? And what I mean by that is, um, will the early votes be tabulated as they come in? I don't mean reported. I mean, put in a queue so that as soon as the last polling place closes, we can hit a button and upload all that data. And will mail-in ballots be counted ahead of time? So there's a bunch there for you to break apart. Right, right. So thank you. So a um, couple things. So first, the General Assembly this year passed a bill that lets the local election officials start counting the mail-in ballots before Election Day. We did that in 2020, but we did it under the emergency powers of the governor and emergency regulations that we adopted. So now this is permanent. So starting eight days before election day, local election officials can start counting the mail-in ballots. They, now they might Nikki, have more than eight days worth of work though, right? I'm sorry. There what? might be more than eight days worth of ballots that there you might still be. might be by 8 p.m. on the 19th of July, still not be through all of them, right? Because I remember That's in the correct. city when Brandon caught up to Sheila and it was five, six, eight days of counting and they were shutting the counting down at four in the afternoon, like all of that was going on. This feels very close to me because it was two years ago, wasn't that long ago, that we're going to do it differently or is it going to be sort of the same? Sort of the same as 2020. So the local election officials can start counting before election day. But in Maryland, we... The local election officials count ballots for 10 days after election day. So we need to start thinking about elections as this election period. It's not a day. It's not a week. It's several weeks. And they'll be counting some ballots before election day and some ballots after election day. And they will be equally weighted. There's no, there's no priority. Uh, there's no preference. We want, they'll count as many as they can before election day while they're also supporting early voting. And they'll continue counting for 10 days after election day. So election night, eight o'clock, the last polling place close, results for early voting will get posted. The results of mail-in ballots that have already been counted will be posted. And then later that night, election night result, election results will be posted. And then over the next 10 days, more results will be posted as they count the remaining mail-in ballots and as they count the provisional ballots. So that should be pretty, pretty, and correct me, feel free to push back and say, Don, you're full of it. But it seems to me that if it's done correctly, the, the 10 day after should be minimal. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to say why, and then you can say, no, Don, you're wrong. If we've counted all of the early vote, and if we've counted the mail-in vote as it arrives, and we tabulate the day of vote, we should have a pretty good sense 
in the state of Maryland and in most of our subdivisions, barring a squeaker like the one that Johnny O always jokes about where, where he won by 17 votes uh, last time, barring that kind of an election, the 10 day after should be pretty perfunctory, shouldn't it, Nikki? It, it should. By the second week, um, most of the mail-in ballots will be counted. The provisional ballots will not be counted until the second week. But that generally is, is a small percentage. It's maybe one, one and a half, two percent of total turnout. So you're right. The numbers are going to be um, released election day and the local election officials count some more mail-in ballots the Thursday after election day. So by that Friday, most of the ballots will be counted. Again, now it's a close contest, so you gotta, you've got to wait till they're all counted. But for most, the majority of the ballots will be counted by that Friday after. Now, you use the term, and, and you're pretty careful in selecting your words. So I'm, I want to think that there was a reason you used this term. You said local officials may begin counting uh, early vote and mail-in votes. You didn't say shall. So I want to know if it's a may or a shall. In other words, do local election officials have the option of saying, we're not counting any of that until the day of? So I believe they're authorized to start. Um, but in 2020, they all started. They, they all want to get some started before election day. Whether they do it once or twice or whether they do it every single day will depend on their staffing abilities. Um, again, as I said, they're supporting early voting during that same time and preparing for election day. So there's a lot of activities going on. So it may not be something that happens every day, uh, but we'll be working with the local election officials to lay out their schedules so that we can make sure we have the support that they need during that time. Um, but I would expect that they'll all do at least one, one day of counting before. Some of the smaller counties, the numbers might not warrant more than one. Um, but in the larger counties or the jurisdictions that have a high percentage of mail-in ballots, uh, they'll probably do multiple days just to get as much of that work out of the way as they can. Nikki, is, uh, Nikki Charleston's here, and we're talking all things elections. Don Moeller is here, of course, on Baltimore Positive. I, so let me just ask you this. From a counting them standpoint, Don and I are we, – we've never missed an election. We vote all the time. He used to run up the street to Catonsville. I used to take my mom over in Dundalk. It was ritual. I didn't really like doing it. I didn't like thinking it may take me an hour. It may take me two minutes. Most of the time, it didn't take me very long. And then I see these – horror things in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, in these places where you're not allowed to mail in. I guess I could have been mailing in for a longer time than I knew about. I used to go to a, a, a senior center downtown when I lived downtown, and it was very quick, and it was kind of painless and easy, and I didn't dread it. But now that I, I have voted by mail, now that I have filled out the ballot, now that my wife and I have done it together over the kitchen table and just said, it's done, on July, mm -mm, whatever, 6th, 8th, 10th, 12th, stick it in the mail, it's over with. I'm sort of addicted to that, right? So, and I think Don and Linda, from all these conversations we have, I'm pretty sure this is the way we're going to do it forever. And then you even cover, we can check the box and say we get all these. How do you know on July 15th, this is where I'll push back on Don, how do you know whether 35% or 6% or 12% because it's all brand new, right? I mean, and now Don and I are addicted. We probably would have said, I ain't never mailing my vote in. You don't know what's going to happen to it. I got to be there and vote. I got to pull the little lever like we did forever. Now we're like, okay, we'll mail in. But I think a lot of people may be feeling the way we are. What's the chance of you getting overwhelmed? Because I don't think anybody really wants to queue up and line up on a hot day in July and run out if they have this option. At some point, a ton of people are going to be doing it this way, and that's going to create these eight to ten days that really angered on uh, that the staffing begins on July 12th and not July 20th. So I think 2020 certainly was the most the, the election that that stressed the system the most. We had half of our voters voting in person and half voting by mail. In the past, we'd, we'd never even had more than 10% of our turnout vote by mail. So that was a stressor. And, and that was the push to have- counted. That's hundreds of thousands of ballots, right? Like literally, right? It, or, or tens of thousands. It was over a million. Least, right? It was over a million. I mean, it was-, it was A million early voters, a million mail-in voters. Yes, yes. So now this- A lot of envelopes. 
it's a lot of envelopes, right? So a couple things have happened. So the legislature permanently allowed us to start counting ballots before election day. Huge, huge help. Our large counties have in the interim in, invested in technology that helps them sort and open um, envelopes, right? So we have now invested in machines that can do what people had to sit there and open envelopes for, for hours, not, not the picture of efficiency. So we're very excited about bringing technology to this process where we didn't need it before. When you, when you have less than 10% of turnout at mail-in, it's not worth spending the money and investing in technology. But now we're looking at, we already have almost 400,000 voters who have asked for a ballot for the primary election. So this is not an anomaly, this, that we all had masks on. This is where we're going in this state. It, it does appear to say that. We, we, we understood that, as you said, mail-in voting is habit forming. We knew that before the pandemic. We knew that. Um, we had the same people year after year requesting a ballot. You Other always, states have, have had experience with this too, right? I mean, correct, correct. Okay. But the West Coast culture is different than the East Coast. You don't see huge um, vote by mail states on the East Coast. It's more central mountain Western, um, but we are seeing growth. And so I think to your point is it's habit forming. People like it. They either didn't like it before or they didn't know about it before. Now, because of 2020, they do and they like it. So I do think we're going to see an increase over time, continued increase of people voting by mail. You know, what that number ultimately sits at, is it going to sit at 50-50? Is it going to be more mail-in voting versus in person? That, I don't know. Um, but we have made adjustments to our process so that we can process an increased number of mail-in ballots more quickly and efficiently than we've ever done before. So that we can a couple of couple of quick things because you're you're very busy and we recognize that and we we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Um, take a couple quick hits. Voter fraud, real or myth? So it's extraordinarily rare. It's extraordinarily rare that it happens, and we have lots of checks and balances in place. Especially people think about the mail-in process. Well, I'm not there. How do you know? So you, every voter has a record. We've authenticated your identity when you register. We can, there's only one active ballot to each person at each election. If you ask for another one, we have voided that first one. We know if it comes back. Uh, we, so when the ex-president says, the celebrity president says, they're mailing hundreds of ballots to the same people. In the state of Maryland, you get one. That's right. You're going to get one ballot you're going to have one active tracking number at a time. Um, if you need a second ballot, we're going to avoid that first one. And we're going to know if it comes in because it's going to send up an alert in the system. Wait a minute. This is not a valid number. Uh, so our system is designed to monitor that. And of course, it's signed under penalty of perjury. And there are consequences if you vote uh, somebody else's ballot or you um, are incorrectly requesting a ballot. Well, I also see the law making an example of these people that these the people that have voted twice, they go to jail. I mean, that's what happens. They, the law knocks on your door, you catch them. And I do, do you make a number? I mean, how many people were fraudulently voting in this state? I think people deserve to know that. How many people have we caught? How many people do we prosecute? Because it probably is like literally a handful, right? So it is. I mean, over the, the, the time I've been here, I think there's been one or two prosecutions, right? So ultimately, we do the review and send it to the Office of the State Prosecutor, and they're the investigator, they're the prosecutor, and they decide to take those cases forward. And there's just been a couple in the last 15, 20 years. Um, so it's very rare because it's hard. It's hard to do with all the checks and balances that we have in place. And as you said, the law catches them and then punishes them. And that's the way our society is, is designed. Nikki, Nestor, uh, because my host about, is, my Nestor, co host is, go ahead. Go think ahead. about that, Nestor, because I see you shaking your head. The energy that we've spent as a nation talking about this issue when the deputy administrator of the Maryland Board of Elections well, says the guy that ran the country's a liar. And well, that, you know, that's on record. Years, and that's the, where been, it is. And that's where I'll sleep. There have been two sleep, or so. three. I mean, it's ridiculous. It last disgusts question. me. No, no, I got a question because oh. my co-host is neurotic, okay? Because I watched him last uh, election. He sent his ballot in. And he was texting me three times. I can't imagine how many times he hit you. When's my vote going to get counted? When's my Refresh, 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 refresh. The fact that there is a system to say – 
I mailed it on Wednesday. Give Nikki and her crew a little time here. I'll check next Wednesday on July 12th or 14th and see if I got counted. But I, he got me doing it. I, I started refreshing, and finally, I think it was like the same day, we both got counted. We're like, hey, I, I'm green. I'm not red anymore or whatever. But, but there is a system for this once you mail it in. You don't have to pray and hope and wonder if it got caught in the cosmos. You literally can go on and see that your vote was counted. That's right. So we have on our voter lookup website, which you can just get to from our homepage, elections.maryland.gov, you can track your ballot. So it'll tell you when your ballot's been sent. And then once we receive it, it'll show that your ballot's been received. And then once it's been counted, it'll change to counted. If we have your email address on file, we'll actually send you an email telling you that. We've got your ballot. We've counted your ballot. So we do, you can come and get it from us or we can push it out to you as long as we have your email address. We will, we will send out emails. We sent out obviously hundreds of thousands of them last time. And we're prepared to do the same this time, letting you know we've got your ballot and then later we've counted your ballot. But it, it could happen, the counting could happen after election day and the receiving could happen after election don't day. Don't do that to Don's, it'll freak him out. If he wakes up <laughs> yeah, don't, it, I'm, don't hey, do that me. to Don. Please don't Mom. do that to Don. My ballot will go in the mail the day it arrives. He's out of his mind, Nikki. I'm telling you, I, I watched it. He was so, he was concerned. I All like this the Trump the election today. He's like, oh, I know Nikki. This is cool. We're, we're uh, going to get counted uh, here. So we're on the up and I up. Like, I like the voting. I like democracy. Call me crazy. Nikki, <laughs> last thing, we're going to ask you to wax philosophically because I don't think the issue that I'm about to raise is just a Maryland issue. I think it's a nationwide issue. Lions clubs, Kiwanis clubs, JCs, you name it. Those kinds of volunteer community organizations have had an increasingly difficult time finding members in this very busy society that we live in today. That gets us to the most important part of our democratic process, getting enough election judges. What I mean, you've studied this. You're you're a nationwide expert on voting. What's what is the future, and how do we as a nation address that issue? So it's a big question, right? That's a discussion probably for a separate podcast. But it is a challenge nationally to find what we call in Maryland election judges or poll workers. Um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It was a challenge before the pandemic. Um, during the pandemic, with less voting locations and people feeling the need and the desire to participate, actually, we had more than we needed. And we would love for all of them to indicate interest this year when the local election officials are struggling to find election workers. Um, this is probably one of the most difficult, consistently difficult parts of their job, are finding people who are willing to work. Long hours, I'm not for, you know, they're, they're paid, it's, but it's not huge amounts of money. Um, but there's, a, there's a, a, a true public service part of this that yes, we need people to sign up to work to be part of this election process. You know, we can talk about different ways of voting that if, if more people vote by absentee mail-in ballots and maybe we need less people to work, um, but all those things are hard to plan when we only have sort of one election under our belt with this trend. I think as we move forward, if the trend continues, we can look at different options to maybe reduce the need. But there's still a need. And it's like, as you mentioned, all these other groups struggling to find members and struggling to find volunteers. It's the same with election workers. Um, oh, it's I, a challenge. I would challenge any organization, any company to, to promote it within their, their organization it's a true investment in your community. It's a couple days work if you volunteer during early voting. It's one day on election day. And it's so critical to our process. And um, we're just pl plotting away. Anybody we can talk to, we say, please sign up and challenge organizations and corporations and businesses to allow their employees to have a day off of work and do this really important public service. Well, Nikki, thanks for taking time out. Nestor, Class has been in session, and as I say, no one knows more about voting, period, than Nikki Charlson at the Maryland Board of Elections. I think we always get smarter when Nikki stops by. Oh, well, you're very kind. There are lots of really, really good people that are working in elections, and um, I just appreciate the opportunity to, to share the wisdom with you all and, and your audience and, and 
I'm happy to come back as we get closer to the election to emphasize other deadlines if you'd like or if other issues come up. But thanks for having me. Core of our democracy. Nikki Charleston joining us here from down in Annapolis. Uh, Don is here. We're going to continue to talk all these things as we lead up to July 19th. And yes, there'll be plenty of Ravens draft and plenty of Orioles and plenty of Preakness and plenty of hopefully World Cup coming here uh, to Maryland as well. We're taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. We'll be at Conrad's. We're doing the Land of Cush on the 18th. Vegan Crab Cake. Yes, it's true. Uh, I'll have some Betty group uh, scratch offs to give away also big thanks to our newest sponsors at goodwill industries as well as window nation i'll be telling you more about that on behalf of former baltimore county executive don moeller who is now much more calm on the election process and i must add that i too believe in a strong democracy i am nestor we are wnst am 1570 towson baltimore and we never stop talking baltimore positive <laughs>